45 years, zero name changes, new offices, more staff, improved technology to better serve you. Education, services, investments, think real estate, think Marshall Reddit, brokerage, property management, private lending, creating financial independence through real estate since 1979. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Marshall Reddick How to Buy Investment Property in 2024. We really appreciate you attending today. Want to talk to you a lot about uh, what's going on in the market and why we're targeting certain markets, etc. Um, but ultimately, my name is Denisa Peralta. Just to introduce myself, I am a real estate advisor here at Marshall Reddick. So what would you say is a real estate advisor? Well, versus like, for example, a realtor. Um, and actually, I'm gonna talk about this slide real quick. This slide talks about Marshall Reddick. Under Marshall Reddick umbrella, by the way, we're a real estate brokerage, we're a property manager, we're a private money lender, and we also have an investment fund for those that are a little more risk averse in terms of investing in actual real estate, then you can actually take advantage of some return on investments with our investment fund. For the past five, six years or so, we have been doing pretty good as far as um, our returns, our annual returns for our clients, approximately in the eight and a half percent range. So, Back to what I was saying, um, what is a real estate advisor? Well, a real estate advisor versus a real estate agent. For example, a real estate agent is going to ask you, well, what do you want to buy? Where do you want to buy it? And then that realtor is going to go help you buy it. An advisor, though, is going to ask you why. Why do you want to buy that property? Um, and it's to help you assess whether it's a wise decision based on the level of financial stability that you're in and also um, what kind of risk aversion you have. We're also going to be able to provide you with research, with analysis, with planning, with guidance, um, create a strategy together, you know, do some management input, also help you evaluate what to acquire, when to sell it, maybe grow your real estate portfolio, always improving on the real estate portion of your investment portfolio. So that's the whole idea. So who am I? I'm also an investor, I've been in the real estate industry as an active investor slash realtor for the past 21 years. Before that, started out as an investor. I'm still a landlord too, to this day been able to do a lot of things since I graduated from Berkeley back in the day. Uh, did some corporate work before getting into real estate uh, full time. Uh, but just know that you are definitely in great hands with us here at Marshall Reddick because we not only talk about it, but we live it. So I'm here to help. Um, in any way, shape, or form that we can help um, diversify and help you just guide you through the process. So, without further ado, I am going to introduce our um, fierce and amazing owner of our company, Marshall Reddick. His name is Scott Pastel. He's been at Marshall Reddick since 19 years, um, uh, well, for 19 years, but he, he started here like right after college. He started here right after college. He was an intern first. And then after so many years, he decided to buy the company with his partner and they've been here since. And it's been a great place to work um, since I started here with him. He's been licensed since 2010 and has also a business degree from Chapman University. Also, he's a landlord too. And um, he's bought his first investment property back in 2009, has definitely bought a lot more since then. Um, as you can see, he has, he has a cute little picture at the bottom with his family. A new baby was just born into the family, a cute little baby girl, and they are just loving each other. And it's awesome. It's great to work for him. He's super knowledgeable and he's personally mentored over 500 real estate investors. I mean, since inception that he, since he's been here. So we would really like to help you guys out. Ultimately, Marshall Reddick is an education platform, so you guys can chime into our events page 
any time throughout the year. But without further ado, Mr. Scott Pastel is here with us and he's going to go over so many golden nuggets for you guys. Thank you so much, Lisa. Just going to try to the audio for a second. All right. Coming in okay? Okay. All right. I think we got it. We're working off of a few different monitors here and a bunch of different audio devices, and it's a, it's a team effort. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Austin. Uh, Austin in our marketing department is always a super helpful resource. And thank you so much, Denisa. Thank you, everybody, for being here with us on our presentation on how to buy investment property. Really excited about uh, spending about the next hour with you guys covering a lot of details on how to buy investment property in general, um, how you know remote real estate investing works, um, how to choose markets, how property management, lending, and all of these different pieces come together. So um, I might move like relatively quick. There's a lot of uh, detail for us to cover tonight. Um, and I'm really looking forward to going through all this with you guys. Um, so, all right, without further ado, thank you again, Denisa, for the intro. And here's basically what we're gonna cover. Um, I'm gonna get into how to set your investment criteria, which is absolutely one of the most important parts of investing in real estate in general, is understanding exactly what types of properties fit your financial goals, fit your experience, um, fit your risk tolerance um, and, and understanding how property classes work. Uh, we'll go through how to do some research, researching markets, researching properties. Uh, we'll talk about the different locations across the country that Marsh Riddick has offices, why we're in um, cities like Austin and Houston um, and San Antonio, Nashville, uh, Tennessee and Fort Myers, Florida. So we'll be covering some of the markets that we have offices, uh, boots on the ground. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without professional property management. Um, Marshall Reddick, as Denisa mentioned, is a full service property management company. I'll be talking about what a professional property manager should do, um, what makes Marshall Reddick unique in us um, being a property manager, what we do different, um, how to protect yourself as a landlord. Um, and then I mentioned already the locations. We'll also be going through a few different property examples. Um, I have a single family property, a duplex, and a fourplex. Um, in different markets, and I'll share with you um, why these investments are so ideal, how we choose properties like this, uh, how we analyze the numbers. And then we'll also go, um, just for a minute or two, um, I'll be um, highlighting our conventional mortgage lender. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about a very unique program um, that we've actually launched with our lender in just the last six months, um, something that is very unique to the industry. Um, it's something that's extremely um, appealing and attractive to our investors, which ultimately allows us to get much lower interest rates um, in the 4% and 5% um, for investors. So excited to talk to you guys um, about that as well. So where do we begin as an investor? And it doesn't really matter what your experience is, whether you uh, own your primary residence or not, or whether you have bought or sold investment properties in the past, um, no matter really where you're at in your journey, um, you've got to understand the roadmap for um, real estate investing. And essentially this is the roadmap. So it looks really basic and it's not a very complicated slide, although I do strongly feel that this is one of the most important slides in the entire presentation um, because it starts with why and it goes clockwise, uh, step by step to who. And what makes Marsh Riddick unique in many ways is uh, the fact that we have full-time real estate advisors like Denica, uh, Denisa, who own investment properties, who have worked with all types of investors, um, and who are basically here to guide you and handhold you through the entire process, uh, no matter whether you're looking at just using lending, property management, um, insurance, whether you're buying or selling a primary or investment property, um, Denisa is basically right in the center of our company um, and can just ask you questions to guide you through the process. So Denisa, as an advisor, 
helps each individual figure out figuring out why they're investing and defining each one of these steps. And everybody's going to have a different roadmap. Um, you know, even if you have a spouse or family member, cousin, brother, coworker, uh, you may have a different roadmap for um, what your real estate investing journey is going to look like. And uh, we help people figure out why they're investing. So what is it that we're trying to accomplish? Are we um, in retirement, nearing retirement, or are we 30 years away from retirement? Um, what do our living expenses look like? Are we, are we looking for investments that will help bring in um, uh, high cash flow with very little appreciation? Are we looking for properties that are gonna grow in value and create equity and, and build wealth that may not have much cash flow? Are we looking for something in between? Um, and ultimately us helping investors figuring out why they're investing is gonna lead us through this process. And once we've been able to figure that out, then we go through all the different options and we open up at least six different ways to invest in real estate from conventional financing to private money lending, which Marshall Reddick does in-house. We have asset-based lending um, that's not credit-based or um, income-based. So. Um, for individuals who are maybe self-employed, they write off a lot of their uh, income for expenses. Maybe you're using an entity, an LLC, or a retirement account. Um, a lot of these ways will typically um, restrict the investor from using conventional financing. So we also offer uh, our you know, um, long-term 15-year and 30-year financing that would be considered uh, private financing. So we'll go through a lot of different options. Um, then we kind of look at when is this going to occur for you? Like, are you ready to make this decision soon? Um, are we far away from it? What needs to happen between now and the time that um, we're looking at, um, you know, actually executing a contract? And then we look at what types of properties make sense. And we're going to get into a lot of the what here. Um, and that could be what the property type is. Is it single family? Is it detached, attached? Is it multifamily? Is it a new property? Is it an old property? Uh, is it a single story or two story? Is it, is it in a community development or is it you know, an infill lot, you know, not in a homeowners association? Um, what type of property is going to fit your goals and your capabilities and your time frame the best? And then finally, um, almost towards the end of here is the location. So most people will start with the location and work backwards. Um, this is actually the proper way to do it. Um, to understand, you know, why you're investing, how you're investing, when you're investing, what you're buying. And then we open up all of these different geographic markets. Uh, Marshall Reddick is in eight different major metropolitan markets from the East Coast to the West Coast, um, very different markets. And we've strategically put ourselves in areas like Nashville and um, Central Texas and Southwest Florida and Southern California, because they really represent a wide array of different investment markets, no matter what type of investor you are, from somebody buying their very first home that might not be looking at you know, a very high purchase price. We sell properties as low as like the 200,000s in our um, Tennessee market. And then of course, you know, other locations um, you know, are much higher and offer all different types of uh, financial benefits. So I'll be covering what locations we're in, and then finally, who are you going to be working with, right? Real estate investing is a team sport. Um, your success will be uh, largely dictated by um, the team and who you're working with. And that's your realtor, property manager, lender, insurance agent, um, even CPA, accountant. All of these people will be part of your success and they're going to affect it positively or not positively. So uh, we're going to talk about the people at Marshall Reddick um, who've worked together throughout thousands of transactions um, and ultimately like what type of company should you be working with when it comes to buying investment property. As we get into the personal criteria, um, we can analyze a property in many different ways. So if we're looking at properties on Zillow or Redfin or uh, anywhere, we're gonna be looking at a lot of different things, right? We're gonna be looking at the age of the property, the square footage of the property, the bed and bath, um, the location, uh, the condition of a property, which, um, you know, we'll have to do some due diligence to determine exact condition. Um, you know, whether it's a single story, two story, does it have a pool, no pool? Um, is it in a homeowners association or not? You know, these are all different components that all affect the property's uh, performance. So um, we're very strategic about the types of properties that we match with investors 
based exactly on what is going to you know fit their uh, goals the best. The one uh, on here that you don't see on um, the MLS or on Zillow or on Realtor.com or Redfin is the property class. Property class is only specific to investment property. And property class in general has always been mainly used in commercial real estate. Um, and it has certainly like transitioned into residential. And uh, 10 years ago, we're actually right around the 10 year mark, Marshall Reddick Real Estate um, created a property rating system that uh, we have used now throughout thousands of transactions and it can be used on any property in the entire country. And I'll be going through um, how property ratings work, but I'm gonna emphasize many times how significantly important it is that you understand how to calculate property class because property class is going to dictate everything from the quality of the renter to how much potential cash flow you'll get, how much potential appreciation you'll get, um, how much maintenance you're going to have, how much vacancy you're going to have. And ultimately, these are all things that, that play a huge role in the long-term success of a property. Um, so it's really important we understand property classes. So um, I would venture to say that I'm sure many of you on our um, um, webinar tonight have read the Reddick Property Rating eBook. If you haven't, I'm going to go through, um, you know, the next uh, seven or eight slides or so are all going to be on our eBook. And then I'm going to show you where to download it. It's on our website. There's a few different places you can download it. Um, Denise can also follow up with you and, and provide you with the link as well. Uh, but um, essentially, this is so important to understand as a real estate investor. So let's forget about location. Let's forget about market. Um, let's just focus on understanding property classes here for a few minutes. So the scale is at the bottom, and I just want to explain how this scale works. So uh, every property in every city and every state has a property class. The property class is based on the relation of the subject property that you're looking at buying or selling compared to the median home price in that metropolitan market. So right off the bat, we have to know what the median home prices are. Thankfully, that's been tracked by the National Association of Realtors for the past 30 years. They've been tracking every single metropolitan market in the country. There's, I think, three or 400 different metropolitan markets. Um, that data is public, and we provide that data um, so that everybody that's looking at properties with Marshall Reddick knows exactly what the median home price is. Well, I think we all know that median home prices vary dramatically when we look around the country. Um, the median home price in the United States of America is in the 400 thousands, meaning there's some locations that have lower median home prices. There's certainly locations that have higher. So we need to understand wherever we're looking at a property, whether we're buying or selling it, we need to know what the most recent median home price is. Now, when we look at the property that we're looking, you know, we buying or selling, just to understand property classes for a minute, higher property classes are higher price, lower property classes, lower price. Higher property classes, you'll see a sliding scale of more potential profit made in appreciation and value with less cash flow. And then on the other side, uh, lower property classes, the overall profit will be significantly higher, or if we're on the extremes, only in cash flow, not in appreciation. So um, right off the bat, Marshall Reddick avoids both extremes. And like some things in life, um, we want to avoid being on either extreme. Um, what we'll see again also with higher property classes is higher tenant quality, lower tenant quality with lower property classes. So we typically avoid, in most cases, luxury class properties as an acquisition. If you're buying an investment property, in most cases, we would say to avoid a luxury class property because in most cases, it will require a significant down payment just to get that property to break even. Um, unless you're paying cash, and obviously because the purchase prices are much higher, that might not be in a lot of investors' wheelhouses. So with higher property classes, we're pretty much just banking on the appreciation. We're not really looking at getting any cash flow. On the right, um, we're looking at all the risks in real estate. So properties uh, in lower property classes are in areas that have much higher crime rates, uh, lower school district ratings, um, properties that are much more prone to evictions, to tenants that cannot qualify on income or credit. Um, so having tenants breaking leases, longer vacancies, because it's very hard to qualify a tenant, um, properties that might incur a lot more damage, so we avoid D-class for all those reasons. 
Now, when you look at a property in an A-class neighborhood, it's much likelier to be in a homeowner's association. In many cases, A-class properties have an HOA. And the HOAs, you know, they'll, they'll preserve the um, quality of the neighborhood. They enforce the rules and regulations. It's the HOA's job to maintain the quality of the neighborhood. It's our job as a property manager to manage the property, but it's their job to manage the community. We can't do community management. So having an HOA is typically a very good thing when you have a single family home. We don't really recommend condos and townhomes as a investment for acquisition because typically the HOAs are much higher um, and we'll see a lot more turnover. We won't see tenants staying quite as long in condos and townhomes. Um, so, you know, for single unit properties, we're all about detached single family homes. But what we'll see in A-class properties are properties that are in neighborhoods that have a much higher percentage of owner occupied properties versus being in B and C class, we'll see a much lower percentage of properties that are owner occupied in those communities. So moving along here, um, one of the pages in the ebook is this map. The map is hyperlinked. So if you are looking at the digital version on our website and you click on the map, it'll take you to the National Association of Realtors website where you can see all the median home prices which we actually just put right on our website. So when you're looking at a property, you can see the median. Uh, and that's coming again directly from the National Association of Realtors. So this is the property rating scale. Uh, we created it, um, we've created it um, 10 years ago. Sorry, let me just make sure. Okay, yeah, we created it about 10 years ago and it can be used for any property. It can also be used for multi-units. Um, the data that we get is based on single family detached homes. Uh, we also have adjusted it slightly for uh, multi-units and apartments. So if you're you know, looking at a single family home, we put the median for that market right there between A and B. And essentially a property that's worth about half the median would be right there on that border of C and D class. Um, and then you can see for A class, that would be properties that are worth the median up to 1.3 times the median. Um, and I'm going to get into how this really plays out financially um, in the next couple slides. So uh, we did a lot of research when we wrote the ebook, um, and uh, you know now, now today Marshall Riddick manages about 3,000 units in five different states and eight different metropolitan markets in the country. Um, when we uh, wrote the ebook, we noticed a very similar trend in the um, income, credit, uh, the job stability. Um, and really just, I guess, like the, the profile of a lot of these renters all throughout the country in different property classes. And what we notice is it's not really like a city or state that attracts a particular tenant. It's really the property class. And it's the property based on where it's located within that metropolitan. Um, and it's based on these different factors that I'm going to go over in a second. But basically, with, with higher property classes, we see tenants that typically have more job stability. So they're higher income earners. Um, they might be white collar like professions. They may, they may specialize in a particular field. And we typically see more um, multiple sources of income with higher um, property class tenants. So luxury class can be everything from business owners to executives, um, individuals who are on the much higher income earning um, scale in that particular market um, with A class, typically white collar professionals, um, B class is going to be average median salary earners. So they're making around the average salary in that metropolitan market. And they can be everything from young adults to seniors and kind of everything in between. Um, C class is typically going to be uh, blue collar hourly wage employees, not as much job stability, uh, maybe a little bit more moving around. Um, and, um, um, you know, that, that often may reflect um, in their pay. They're not able to maybe show as much income to qualify for, for higher rental properties. And then D-class are individuals who are low income, below the poverty line, um, many times maybe on like government vouchers. Um, Section eight, if you've heard of that, are typically going to be you know, renters in this category. Um, what factors impact property class? So as we're going down the infographic there, uh, as I mentioned, school districts, crime rates, and the cost per square foot, which is dictated by demand essentially supply and demand for people buying homes in a particular area, um, which is going to create more demand. And if we see that margin of demand and supply, that's what's going to drive up prices more. 
Um, and it's not really based on the aesthetics of the property. So what it says there on the infographic, what doesn't matter very much is um, whether it's an old property, new property, condo, single family, the condition, the age, the size of a property, those things do not matter nearly as much as the location. So when you hear people say that the three most important words in real estate are location, 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 they could not be more right. So um, just to help you remember what type of financial benefits come from A, B, and C, at the very bottom, we have nicely defined that A class will provide you more appreciation, B will be a combination of both, and C will provide you with more cash flow. So now we get into some of the numbers, and this is basically you know, where the rubber meets the road here and why we want to know property classes because the top bar there is for one to four unit properties. So anything that is a one to four unit property on one parcel is considered residential. Any building that has five or more units on one parcel is considered commercial. So essentially I would just put that into the apartment category there. Uh, but when we're gonna look at the top here, A class, B class, C class. So these are estimates. These are percentages of the monthly rent. Um, these are not going to be monthly expenses. You're not going to have maintenance every month. You're not going to have vacancy every month. But when you are calculating your return, when you're trying to figure out what your um, monthly cash flow or annual cash flow looks like, you have to budget in some conservative estimates for maintenance and vacancy. If you want to understand how much you're going to be left with, um, then you know landlords are responsible um, for obviously paying a mortgage or having a loss of income during a vacancy. Um, and then like long-term wear and tear and um, certain repairs that the landlord is going to be responsible for um, will come along with uh, owning rental property. So we have to budget 8% of the monthly rent for maintenance, 8% of the monthly rent for vacancy on A class, and then 10% and 10% for B, and 13% and 13% for C. The message here and what I've, what I've illustrated on the last slide is that higher property classes have less maintenance and vacancy overall. And to uh, figure out basically what the financial um, result is of, of vacancy, you can take that percentage and multiply it by the number of days in a year. And you're basically removing that income from your annual forecasting, from your annual um, you know, pro formas to say, well, you know, it's not a matter of if I have maintenance and vacancy, it's a matter of when, um, especially since most investors own their rental properties for between 10 to 15 years, right? We might get a property rented quickly and then the renter moves out and then they stay, next one stays for a few years and they move out. So we can't exactly determine how long renters are gonna stay in properties, but we can certainly tilt the odds in our favor based on the property itself. And what you'll notice with Marshall Reddick is all of the single family homes that we recommend are three to four bedroom, two to three bath, two car garage, detached single family homes. Whether it's in any of our markets, you're gonna find properties that are very, very, very similar. Uh, even the square footage, most of the properties that we sell and recommend are between about 1200 square feet to about 2200 square feet. Um, we don't recommend five bedroom homes. We don't typically recommend two bedroom homes. Um, we don't recommend uh, three bed, one bath homes, right? So it's all three to four bedroom, two to three bath in that, in that um, sweet spot of about 1,200 to 2,200 square feet. Why? And I can go on for a long time about why, but one of the reasons right off the bat is that is the most in-demand property from the rental market. Those are the types of properties that will attract long-term renters. Um, having an attached garage allows for renters to utilize it for storage, for their cars, um, and it really just results in a longer term tenancy. So the types of renters that we want in long term uh, buy and hold are typically families because we know that families are typically like one unit. Um, they typically stay in a property for much longer um, compared to a one bedroom or two bedroom condo or apartment. Um, we'll see a lot more turnover in those because any renter in there, if they're, if they're gonna be you know, accumulating more stuff right accumulate more belongings or building their family eventually they're going to run out of space right and if they don't have a garage then they are going to have to go rent a storage unit and might just say i i'm going to look for a bigger place so um we're not going to agree on which property classes make sense for us because we're all different investors here but one thing that we'll all, all agree on 
completely unified is that we all want the least amount of maintenance and vacancy as possible. So um, the type of property is certainly going to dictate that, but the property class will have the biggest impact. So you can download our Reading Property in an ebook, which we highly recommend. We actually um, tell every single client that is looking at investing in real estate to read this ebook. It's only about 39 pages, I think. So it's maybe an hour read. It's full of data. It's full of links um, with, with a lot of information in it. And essentially, this book is designed to help you figure out exactly which property classes fit your goals. So we always recommend to read that. That's one of the takeaways in our presentation. Um, now let's talk about where to invest, right? So it's a big, big country out there, right? Um, but we know that not every state, not every city, not every property makes sense for investing in real estate. So what are those factors? What are those unbiased, like completely objective factors that go into what makes a uh, city or state ideal for real estate investing? So um, our company, by the way, which was founded 40 years ago, was uh, based in California for many years until we branched out to Texas, then Tennessee, and then to Florida. Um, we had to get our broker's license in each of these locations. We had to get office space. We had to hire staff, right? We have to, um, uh, you know, be an employer in each of these markets. Uh, we do property management in each of these markets. So why did we decide to set up in these locations as, a far, as opposed to others? So we tried to combine all of these factors here. And, uh, you know, we found some of these markets to fit a lot better than others. And when it comes down to it, as investors, we want to look at the job market. We want to know um, how many employers, how many major employers are there, what types of industries are supporting the job market, what is the um, unemployment rate based on the population. And what I'm going to explain in a moment is we uh, highly recommend uh, and we only personally stick to major metropolitan markets, but we're not really recommending properties in the downtown. They're in the suburbs of major metropolitan markets. So all the markets we're in from Clarksville, Tennessee, to Fort Myers, Florida, to Houston, and Austin, and San Antonio, and uh, Los Angeles, and Orange County, all have between half a million to about, you know, three million people living in the greater metropolitan. That opens up a much bigger uh, tenant pool. We want to have the most amount of renters. We also want to have the most amount of future buyers if we're looking at our exit strategy in the future. Uh, we want to have a lot of demand. We want to have a lot of demand for rent, and we want to have a lot of demand for sale. And that demand is only going to push the rent values and the real estate values up more and help us, you know, decrease our vacancy. So uh, we're in some of the strongest job markets in the country, um, especially with Texas, Tennessee, Florida. Uh, these are all extremely business friendly markets, which are also the most uh, landlord friendly locations, uh, which also are all three um, non-state income tax uh, locations, Texas, Tennessee, Florida, no state income tax, uh, much more business friendly, a lot of big businesses that have already expanded over the last decade and continue to, and just a tremendous amount of population growth from people all over the country. But it's not enough to just have um, strong job markets. We need to see economic diversity. We need to see um, a lot of different industries supporting that job market. And we also need to see housing affordability. So we're in locations that have a median home price that is lower than the national average. We want to be able to get the most bang for our buck and we want to be able to get, you know, the highest um, income for our purchase price and be able to build portfolios in these markets um, as opposed to just being able to buy maybe one home. So um, all of these factors included, uh, there's colleges and universities in these um, major metropolitan markets that support you know, students who are going to enter the workforce in the future. And, you know, you can't invest anywhere in the country without reliable property management. Um, and reliable property management is using a professional property management company, which I'm going to get into uh, in our presentation today. So these are the locations that Marshall has offices across the country. Uh, we're in four metropolitan markets in Texas. Uh, New Braunfels is like an emerging um, metropolitan. I don't know that it's considered an MSA. Right now, at this point, it's certainly, um, you know, on on track to be in the future. Uh, New Braunfels is right in between San Antonio and Austin. Uh, but we're in, you know, two metros in Tennessee. The Cape Coral Fort Myers market in uh, southwest Florida, very strategically in southwest Florida, 
um, and not on the north or not on the east coast. And the reason that we are in southwest Florida is because there's significantly less hurricane activity that typically comes from the Bahamas. Um, these are all new construction properties that we sell in Cape Coral. Um, the returns are extremely high. So inv investors that are looking in Florida, no matter if it's Jacksonville, Orlando, or Miami, or wherever you're looking, we're going to show you how you can get a significantly better return in the Cape Coral market than anywhere else. And, um, you know, we're in a lot of different locations, right? The immediate home prices range significantly um, from California to these other markets. But um, these are the areas that we have found years and years and years um, to provide all of the best um, components for investing in real estate. And these are the people at Marshall Reddick um, that make this all possible. So this is about 75% of our staff. All of these pictures were taken in December of last year. We do our annual holiday photos, you know, in December. So um, we're looking at five different locations and, uh, you know, a lot of our teams um, in the real estate, property management and private lending uh, in all of these photos. So starting on the top left and then kind of going clockwise there, that is our new Braunfels, Texas and Austin, Texas team standing in front of our uh, office with the most monumental sign I've ever seen for any real estate company, that's 40 feet long, uh, but it faces the I-35 freeway. So pretty good, um, you know, advertising and marketing for us. So that is our new Broadfields in Austin, Texas team going to the right. That is our San Antonio, Texas team going down clockwise there. That is our Clarksville, Tennessee, and a couple of our agents in Nashville. Uh, right in the center at the bottom is in front of our Newport Beach, California office. And um, that's going to be our, our administrative team. So we're seeing more of our accountants, software development team, marketing team, private lending team um, in the um, California picture there at the bottom. And then uh, finally, um, on the bottom left is our Cape Coral, Florida team. So um, our Newport Beach and Los Angeles is where we have our headquarters. So it's a lot of our administrative staff in addition to the realtors and property managers. In Texas, Tennessee, Florida, these are all individuals that work in our real estate and property management teams. Everybody from realtors, leasing agents, maintenance managers, property managers, tenant coordinators, they're all servicing the 3,000 properties that we manage and the 600 plus or minus transactions that we do a year on average. Um, if you ever wanted to visit any of these locations, you certainly can. Um, you will hopefully be talking to a lot of these people over Zoom, video calls, uh, phone, email. Um, but no matter where you're located, um, these are the people that make this all possible. Um, we have uh, landlords and clients in about 20 different countries across the globe, um, not just in the U.S., but in a lot of different countries, Costa Rica, Turkey, Canada, Mexico, um, Israel, um, uh, where I'm, I'm blanking, but a lot of Dubai. We have uh, yeah, clients in China and basically all over the world that are buying, selling, and having us you know, manage and lease their properties in these territories. So obviously working with clients all over the country, you know, we have a lot of ways to connect with our clients. So our philosophy for location is right there on the very top. We target the suburbs of major metropolitan markets. Two of our markets on the screen here, San Antonio, Texas on the left, Austin, Texas on the right, um, each marker is the address of a building, and that building can be a single family home or a duplex or a fourplex or an apartment building. But um, I wanted to illustrate where we focus on in each of our metropolitan markets, and it's typically going to be on the outskirts in the suburbs. Um, we get very, very uh, micro and very, very detailed on exactly where in each of our territories it makes sense to invest in, in locations that it doesn't. And you can just see with San Antonio, we manage about 700 units in San Antonio alone. And there's only maybe a matter of like 10 of those that are south of the 10 freeway. And so we stick to the Northwest to the Northeast for a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, the South and the central San Antonio is where San Antonio was founded. A lot of like turn of the century properties, a hundred years old no HOAs, we're not gonna see a highly rated school districts. Um, but when we start looking at like far west, going clockwise to Holotus, Shabano Park, and then going northeast to Selma, Shirts, um, Converse, these are these suburbs that are in San Antonio proper. And these are tenants that, that 
you know, mostly work inside of San Antonio, but they're living in these suburbs. And um, this is where we're just, you know, we're seeing, um, you know, better tenant quality, um, lower days on market, more consistency in the overall experience of that property. And then on, in Austin, it's kind of the same thing. Most of the properties are in the north, which is like uh, Round Rock, Pflugerville, Georgetown, um, Leander, Cedar Park. And then or in the south, which is like Kyle, Texas or Buda, Texas. In that, you know, actual city of Austin, you see basically like one or two or three properties there. Um, and those are typically not in most investors' wheelhouses. So um, when you're looking at remote investing, buy and hold investing, you want consistency, you want passive income, and it's going to happen um, by and large in the suburbs of these major metropolitan markets. And I kind of already mentioned why we want to be in a major metro for the higher um, tenant bases, the diversification of employment. Um, and then for you as the client, you have more selection of property management. We're not the only property manager in town. So you're going to see a lot more competitiveness and, and hopefully a lot more better quality um, property managers. Uh, we don't have a lot of competition in some of our locations, but we certainly do in others. And I think that that's just good for the client, good for the landlord. Um, higher chance of population growth and higher chance of appreciation and value when buying in a major metropolitan market. And ultimately for Marsha Reddick and, and what we've been teaching and preaching for decades is the type of tenant that we want is a long-term tenant. So there's no, there's no special niche we have to fit in here. We're not bullish or nor would we recommend trying to fit into this little niche of you know, trying to attract traveling nurses or student housing or Section 8 housing or like why put yourself in a box? Like why limit yourself to a small margin of the rental market when you can open up such a massively larger uh, percentage of the tenant pool? And when we want lower vacancy, when we want less maintenance, families, long term tenants are the ones that are going to um, help us. Um, accomplish that. So where are families? Families are in the path of growth. Families are typically in newer subdivisions. Families typically look for lower crime rates, better school districts. And ultimately, that's where we attract the type of tenant that we want. Um, so our saying here is that, you know, with what we're doing here is ready, aim, fire. We all know that expression, ready, aim, fire. Uh, unfortunately, like I think 90% of investors out there do the opposite, fire ready aim. They buy a property because they, somebody told them this was a good location and they just kind of went along with it and they didn't have an advisor like Denisa, they didn't have a company like Marshall Reddick who provides all this education and they didn't even know what type of property they bought until months or even years after they bought it. And then they learn, oh, that's not really a good location. Oh, you know, that's, you know, a, you know an area that's changing a lot. Oh, that's, you know, an area that's, um, you know, not considered necessarily where you may see the highest return. And, um, you know, you're obviously much better positioned to understand what type of property, what type of tenant, how is this going to work? And then let's look at the properties that are going to provide us that. So we have a great marketing team at Marshall Reddick that has put together market data packets. Um, these are all recent within the last, actually, I think about six to nine months. Um, and you can download a market data packet on any of our locations on our website right there at the bottom, marshreddick.com forward slash market data. Um, that way you can just understand like what, who are the major employers? What are the demographics? What's the history of the town? What's the recreation? Like what are these towns known for? Um, you might be really familiar with these locations or you may not be, but Denise will be able to, you know, walk you through that a little bit more. And you guys can also download these market data packets just to give you you know a lot more understanding of that market there's a lot of good data charts graphs um the median home prices median rents uh all of that in these market data packets so now we're getting to the, the some of the uh, exciting parts is kind of looking at some property examples and i mentioned that we have a very unique um lending program through our um preferred uh mortgage lender Reed Hazard with CMG Mortgage. Uh, Reed and CMG are Marshall Reddick's preferred lender. Um, they do loans nationwide. So they're in um, um, you know, every state, and especially all the locations that Marshall Reddick has offices. And we've been able to 
create a very, very exciting, unique program that works for new construction properties, which is certainly appealing to a lot of investors, especially buying a property far away. But you're not having to really worry about a lot of the uh, maintenance and repairs for many years. So this program works mainly for new construction. We have it available, available for single family, duplex, and fourplexes. And this is something that we have with many, many different builders. And in today's market, um, we're in this unique place where in some cases, new construction and resale are kind of like almost the same price in many cases. Um, I don't know if you're seeing that. We're certainly seeing that in a lot of areas like builders, building communities, getting very aggressive on pricing, providing a lot of seller concessions that are really just making a resale property almost look like it, there's no competition to it um, when you look at it. Certainly with new construction, having a builder warranty for one year interior or 10 year um, exterior foundation, um, tenants love new construction. Landlords love new construction for not having, you know, a lot of the maintenance and repairs. We love new construction as property managers. And I think best of all, we have the ability to get interest rates between 4.75 and 5.25% on a 30-year uh, amortized loan, and it's a 10-year adjustable rate. So it's fixed for 10 years. Um, you can refinance within 10 years. You can pay off the loan within 10 years. You can sell the property within 10 years. Um, so it's, it's really like the lowest risk arm loan where we wouldn't want to do this with a three-year arm or a five-year arm or probably even a seven-year arm. But we feel pretty strongly that within 10 years from now, rates are going to go down. Um, and, you know, you can always refinance into a fully um, fixed interest rate loan. But um, it's, uh, it is a 30-year amortized and these rates are based on a 30% down. And um, each of the builders we work with are paying a concession that is well above the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac requirement of 2%. And so when you do a little research, you'll find that um, sellers are limited in paying no more than 2% of the sale price towards a buyer concession. We've been able to get around that. This program is called a Ford Commitment. Uh, we didn't invent it. Um, we certainly made it unique to Marshall Reddick. Uh, but this program allows us to get around that 2% of sale price concession limit. And we're getting uh, buy downs as high as like 6 and 7% of the sale price from these builders that are you know, motivated enough to attract investors by offering you know, much lower interest rates. So um, all the properties I'm gonna share with you right now, um, all come along with this Ford Commitment Financing. Um, Reed Hazard and CMG is the lender that this program is with. So we work within our you know, preferred lender that we've worked with for many years. This program only works with Marshall Reddick and CMG Mortgage um, and many of the different builders that we work with. So um, let's take a look at the San Antonio first. Um, one of the reasons that we're in San Antonio is because it is relatively one of the safest markets in the country to invest in. How do we know that? Well, we're really looking at that right now. Uh, San Antonio's never had a crash. In 30 years or you know, 25 years, it's had very consistent, very steady appreciation. And in 2008, 9, 10, when most markets in the country went down 20, 30, 40, 50% in value, San Antonio completely maintained that stability. So if you were to ask, what's one of the safest markets? Like if you're very risk adverse and you want to invest in a safe market, this is what a safe market looks like. Um, this is a market that has had very consistent growth for 25 years across multiple market cycles. But let's look at the property class. So at the end of 2022, the annual median home price in San Antonio was 337,000. Uh, we don't have the data yet from NAR for 2023. That usually gets published a little bit later in the year. So we're going off of the uh, 2022 data. And what we're looking at is properties, single family homes um, in these ranges will fit into the various property classes. So, you know, right off the bat, let's take a $300,000 single family home in San Antonio. We know that would fit like right there in the middle of B class, like right in the middle of that scale, right? So we know Okay, if it's a B-class property, we want to set aside 10% of the rent for maintenance. 
10% of the rent for vacancy, and we're going to get a combination of cash flow and appreciation. Um, let's take a look at some property examples here. So one of the things that we're extremely excited about in San Antonio, which is very rare, uh, we don't have this in any of our other markets, are new construction fourplexes. And we have searched and searched and searched, and they are very hard to find. Um, but thankfully, in the past couple of years, we've partnered with a fourplex builder. Our community is called Hunter's Ranch. We've already sold a, a handful of these fourplexes. And um, Marshall Reddick works as the buyer's agent. We also lease and manage all of the units for the builder in this community. And this builder is doing a very aggressive um, concession that's allowing um, our investors to get rates, again, between 4.75 and 5.25%. Um, what, what, what dictates that? If you put a little bit more uh, points, if you pay a little bit more points, then you can get that down to 4.75%. Uh, in most cases, what the builder is paying in a seller concession um, will be able to get you to that 5.25% uh, rate. I, I do want to, because this is obviously, you know, a lot of numbers and detail, um, I want to come back to uh, this flyer here so that you can see the buyer paid points on each one. Um, so basically a 1.63% buyer paid point will get you that 5.25% rate and about a 3% point will get you down to a 4.75. Most of the um, buy down is coming from the seller um, to get us from rates that are in the sevens to the fours and the fives. So, um, and we can talk to you directly about all of this, connect you with our lender, with the builder, with the agents in each market, so they, we can explain this to you in more detail. Uh, but we're also offering six months of free property management on all of the new construction properties that we have this board commitment on. So basically here, we're looking at a, at a beautiful fourplex with three bed, um, two and a half bath, uh, units per per unit. They all have attached garages. Um, and then we can see that uh, each unit is about 1,250 square feet. And uh, these attract families. And so uh, this builder, of course, provides a warranty. Um, we already have sold and managed uh, a handful of these, but um, they're great for cash flow. They're great for, you know, long-term appreciation. Um, the builder prices these at a million fifty. And we're seeing a combined rents on the fourplexes at about $6,600 um, for the whole fourplex. So divide by four, that's obviously what they're, they're renting for per unit. And uh, we put in the taxes, the insurance based on an insurance quote from our insurance agent. Uh, we do the property management, we charge 8%, but we're offering the first six months for free. Uh, that is the homeowners association fee. And the landlord is responsible for some gardening uh, lawn care. So that's what the utilities are there for. And, um, you know, we're seeing about $780 a month without any maintenance and vacancy. And, um, you know, if we factor in maintenance and vacancy without any rent increases, we're going to get a phantom number that says estimated cash flow. That's not really truly the cash flow because we're not paying maintenance and vacancy every month. Um, in fact, we're going to probably go quite some time without seeing much or any vacant uh, maintenance. And so, um, you know, when you have months without maintenance and vacancy, you're looking at $783 based on all of the assumptions here. And this is also based on 30% down. Our conventional lender will let you go as low as 20% down. But to get that interest rate and to get that cash flow, we recommend uh, at least 25 to 30% down. And then Fort Myers, Florida, like many other metropolitan markets in the country, saw some ups and downs um, during the Great Recession 15 years ago. Cape Coral, which is also Fort Myers, so it's kind of part of the same metro, um, is much more affordably priced than Orlando, than Tampa, um, than Miami. Their median home price sits at about 430,000. And um, you know we're finding uh, really nice single family homes and duplexes um, that have seen you know significant appreciation, um, see a lot of demand, and um, you know have also great cash flow. One of the biggest differences between Florida and Texas is the property taxes. So where um, where Cape Coral and Lehigh Acres, by the way, is, is part of the same metropolitan, it's just a little bit east of Fort Myers, it's all part of Lee County. Uh, 
where we'll see much lower property classes, we're not necessarily going to see the same amount of employment or job growth um, that we might see in Texas, although um, we still see some pretty strong job growth. It's a smaller metropolitan market. Um, but what we do find are beautiful single family homes and duplexes. And here is one example. So we work with a builder in the Southwest Florida market. And, um, you know, we have already, again, sold many of these duplexes. Um, these are also three bed, two bath per side with an attached garage. Uh, this builder is selling these for about 550000 And we rent these for right around $2,000 a month. And um, we just closed uh, on our sixth one in the last about six months or so. And we're already, you know, because these are all in the same location, we're already, you know, getting $2,000 a month rent very consistently. Um, many of these are also attracting families because they're three beds, two bath per side. Uh, this builder is also doing a aggressive rate buy down that gets our clients rates to about 5.25%. So great cash flow, especially for new construction. Um, historically, you don't really find cash flow on new construction. We're in a very unique time now where one of the biggest benefits is being able to get new construction properties at the same prices as resale, but with significantly higher cash flow. So it is absolutely the best of all worlds. And it's kind of hard to justify resale properties right now in these markets for so many of the reasons that I'm that I'm explaining here. Clarksville, Tennessee is actually our most affordable market. So this is where we see the lowest median home price out of all the markets we're in. So about $250,000 median home price at the end of 2022. So if you're a type of investor that's, that's looking at a very small down payment, smaller purchase, excuse me, smaller purchase price, uh, maybe you don't have the funds to do a fourplex or, or other higher price properties, um, we're probably going to recommend the Clarksville market. Also very low property taxes, low insurance, um, strong job market, and um, also a very stable growth market that hasn't seen any drops either in the last 25 years. So and also very, very, very safe market. Both San Antonio and Clarksville are home to some of the biggest military bases in the country. Clarksville is home to the second largest military base for Campbell which is right on the other side of Kentucky and Oak Grove, which is also part of the Clarksville metropolitan market. Marshall Reddick manages about 400 properties between Clarksville and Nashville. And, um, you know, this is one of the types of properties that um, is very appealing and attractive to a lot of our investors. So this is actually like right on the border of luxury. I mentioned, you know, we don't typically go that high, but Clarksville's median home price is so low. This kind of sits like right on that border of A and luxury, but um, it's a beautiful home. You know, we, we have a builder that we work with that builds these single family homes in, a, in several different communities, usually in like the 300 to maybe $375,000 price range. Um, and uh, what's great about this particular builder is that he allows us to place renters in properties before we contract on them, which most builders will not do. Um, so we're able to sell these properties like this one with a renter in place. This one actually just went under contract uh, within the last few days. Uh, we do have other properties like this from this builder. But um, yeah, like I said, this one, 360000 They're all about in the 300000 range. Um, we do sell resale properties in all of these markets. So I do want to mention that. Um, but we're obviously going to show you, you know, based on um, where we're at right now in the market, why new construction might be. Um, a better fit for many of you. Although we do have the ability to open up the MLS and look at anything that is for sale. Uh, why we love this again is it's new construction. The builder does a buy down that gets our investors rates to five and a quarter. We provide um, free property management on these properties. Um, it's typically six months. This one had a special at 12 months, but we are offering at least six months of free property management on all the properties in this market. And we're seeing on this particular property close to $400 a month cash flow um, before any estimates for maintenance and vacancy. This one didn't have a leasing fee, so the uh, buyer did not have to pay a leasing fee because Marshall Reddick leased it before uh, the buyer contracted on it. So great property, four bed, three bath, 1,800 square feet. And um, you know, one of the types of properties that we find in our Clarksville, Tennessee market. So we wouldn't be able to do what we do without the professional property management. Um, 
I will recommend that if you're interested in learning a lot more about our property management, we do have recorded presentations that we do that are just on our property management, 60 minutes, only property management at Marshall Reddick. So I'm just going to summarize it here for a few minutes, but you can find those recordings on our learn page. And also, Denisa can um, send you a link to our most recent webinar on how and why to hire a professional property manager. So um, I think the biggest recommendation that I have right off the bat is no matter who you work with when you buy an investment property, that you work with a company that does both the real estate uh, sales and agency part of it and the property management. And I also want to make it very clear that realtors are not property managers. Property managers are property managers and realtors are realtors. So although any human being theoretically can collect rent or throw a property up for rent online, that doesn't make them qualified. That doesn't make them the experts. Um, it doesn't make them effective at it. So um, we are realtors, but we also have a full team of about 50 staff members in property management that only work in property management. And they have very clearly defined job roles. And that's the type of company you want to work with. I strongly, strongly um, urge you to not buy a property on your own or with a realtor and then go hire a property management company. It's like doing like, you know, different surgeries with different doctors, but like all in the same part of your body. Or I don't know if that's a good analogy or not, but um, it, you know, it works a lot better when you have one team that can say, well, this is the type of property that you should, um, you know, we'd recommend. And we're going to be the ones that have to lease it. We're going to be the ones that have to manage it. So there's a tremendous amount of accountability in a company that has to put their money where their mouth is and actually do all the hard work after the property closes, do the repairs, do the leasing, do the management, collect the rents, enforce the lease, post notices. That's what we do. So wherever you work, wherever you acquire a property, and hopefully it's with Marshall Reddick, but either way, you have to work with a company that will lease and manage the property that they're selling you. Um, and there needs to be a full property management team. So our job is to protect your privacy and identity. Um, our job is to be your representative of that property. So we're the ones that decline applications. We're the ones that reject tenants um, requesting repairs that are not the landlord's responsibility. We're the ones enforcing um, late fees. We're the ones posting notices. We're the ones um, basically doing the hard work, being the bad guys sometimes. Um, you know, that's a part of property management. You know, you can't always satisfy the renter and they're not always going to have their way. And it's our job to enforce the lease agreement. It's our job to enforce the HOA's rules and regulations. It's our job to enforce the rental property codes and the laws. So we have to follow uh, federal fair housing laws. We have to follow state um, real estate laws. And um, obviously us being in these locations and having these teams um, allows us to do this so successfully. So we also do a very thorough rental analysis to help you understand why we're recommending a certain number for the rent, whether it's when you're buying it or whether it's when the renter moves out and we're having to rent it again. Uh, we're going to provide you with a CMA report to show you why we're recommending a certain range in rent. It's not based off of opinion. It's not based on how prop pretty the property looks. It's based on how, what similar properties have rented for in that less than one mile radius with very similar bed, bath, and square footage. Um, and we're going to provide you that data. And it's also our job to advertise, take professional photos, list it on all the major platforms, which right off the bat, our properties are on Zillow and about 30 different websites that many um, realtors or landlords do not have access to on their own. Our property management software at Folio syndicates to dozens of different websites that realtors who just post on the MLS do not have access to. Many MLSs do not connect with Zillow, meaning if you hire a realtor, whether they're with Caldwell Banker or Compass or Berkshire Hathaway or Century 21 or Remax or yada yada, that it's very likely by them posting that on the MLS, it is not going to connect to Zillow. Um, we have to pay Zillow and Zillow charges for rental property listings. We pay Zillow an exorbitant amount of money each month um, to have uh, anywhere from about 50 to 100 uh, of our properties listed on Zillow. So um, that's what you're going to get with a professional management company. We um, screen the tenants. We do showings by appointment only. We do not give people the keys to your property to go see it on their own. And if that's what your property manager does, fire them right now. 
Um, we also make sure that all of our agents are licensed. Um, they are commission only. It's their job to show these properties mornings, evenings, weekends, around the clock. All they do is lease properties. This is their job. When somebody calls us and says, can I see the property in two hours? If we vet them properly, then we might be able to do that showing in two hours. Um, we meet them at the property. We walk them through the property. We're the last one to leave that property. I say this because there's a lot of management companies that do not do their own tours. They have some app on the door and they give tenants a uh, ability to open the door and they can leave the lights on and they can leave the door open and they can pee on the carpet or do whatever. Right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> you know, I'm pretty straightforward about this, I guess. So, um, you should be working with a management company that tours the property. Oh my God. What a novel idea. Um, so anyways, that's one of the many things we do. Um, we provide the state contract as the lease agreement. We go through it with the tenant and we make sure that we charge the highest late fee that the state allows and that we impose all of the penalties and fines that should be in a lease, but are not going to be in a lease unless the right individual or company puts it in there. Um, so we have early termination fees for the renters, notice posting fees, insufficient funds fees, late fees, um, uh, last minute maintenance cancellation fees, all fees that will um, protect us and the landlord um, from things that tenants might end up doing that are not going to be in our best interest. Um, we collect the rent electronically. In fact, uh, tenants uh, log into their portal on Appfolio and um, the uh, moment that rent is considered late at midnight on the day that rent is late, that auto charge for late fee gets automatically added. We don't take renters payments from Zelle or personal checks or Venmo, they have to put their banking information in and they can set up auto pay. Um, we, we, we treat this like a business because this has to be treated like a business. This is not a hobby. This is not just some part-time thing. For most of you, this is gonna be your financial livelihood. This is gonna be your retirement. This is gonna be your nest egg. You should be working with a professional management company. Not to mention we do periodic inspections. We do a move-in inspection annual inspections each time the renter signs another 12 month or 18 month extension we walk that property and we make sure that they are in, um, following the lease agreement and the building code i just want to mention three things before i or two quick things before i go to the next slide um, we have three jobs while the property is vacant and we have um, two major jobs while the property is occupied our high level job while the property is vacant is to lease the property to the highest quality renter in the shortest amount of time um, to um, for the highest rent amount. Did I say that right? The highest rent amount to the best quality renter in the shortest amount of time. And we have to combine those things. So we know that longer days on market eats away at um, your return. And we know that we obviously need to have highly qualified renters and we don't want to underprice the property, but we don't want to overprice it. So we've got to have all three of those combined. Our job while the property is occupied is to enforce the lease agreement. And many renters and landlords don't understand it. And that's what our job is to provide the lease and enforce every single term in that 20, 30, 40 page contract. So um, our property management is not considered a major profit center. We do the property management and we have fees, of course, to cover our expenses, um, but we also do property management to be able to, to, to provide consistency, predictability, and control over our clients' um, investments. We would not be able to do what we do without the property management. Um, we're very competitive in most of our markets. We're not going to be the cheapest. We're not going to be the most expensive, typically right there in the average um, between um, six, seven, eight percent based on the property type. We don't charge our management fee while the property is vacant. Um, and we can go to a lot more detail on our property management, but completely full service. We have 24 hour maintenance emergency services. We have hundreds of vendors from plumbers, electricians, roofers, handymans, contractors. Um, the, I think the most important part that I want to um, impress upon you is that we don't have the typical maintenance conflict of interest that many property managers do. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's basically two types of property managers. There's ones that make money from maintenance and repairs, and there's ones that don't. 
and we're ones that don't. And so our value proposition to our landlords is we only make money when you make money and we don't make money when you lose money. Uh, half property managers have this massive conflict of interest, half don't. Who are the ones that do? Typically the ones that do are the ones that do maintenance and repairs in-house. Maybe the um, broker is a general contractor. Maybe they're partnered with a company that is a general contractor. And maybe they require that all the rate repairs on your property are handled by their in-house team. And you may have no idea how much money they are making off of the maintenance and repairs. That is not how we do property management. All of our vendors from our handyman to um, electricians, plumbers, roofers, uh, landscapers, every single type of vendor is independent. And they are our preferred vendor, which means that we have their W-9, their insurance, their license, they're bonded. We're on their insurance. Um, we have vetted them and they have signed a contract with us that has terms to allow them to be one of our preferred vendors. In any moment in time, we can stop sending them business. We're not married to any one vendor. We have dozens and dozens and dozens in each of our metropolitan markets. And we've got like five to 10 plumbers because not only do we need multiple contractors because we have so many different properties, we don't want to have to pull a contractor away from one of our properties and move them to another. So we have so many different contractors that we work with. Um, so not only is it not in your best interest to have a small team that only does repairs in-house because they don't have the manpower to service a lot of properties at once, but they're also profiting when you're losing money. So it's very important to understand when a company um, does maintenance and repairs and profits on it or a company like us, where the only money we make in property management is um, from the renter, from the rent, from the leasing fee, from the management fee, um, and not from maintenance and repairs. So I know we're a little bit past time here. Um, so I'm gonna kind of just uh, go through the financing portion to kind of get to um, the, sorry, one second. Um, I already kind of covered a little bit about the um, CMG Reed Hazard Ford commitment. Um, all I could say really is that uh, Reed has been an incredible lender, licensed for 20 years, um, and that you know we're going to recommend him. Um, if you have a lender that you worked with before, that's great. We're still going to recommend that you talk to our preferred lender um, because uh, you know he's just provided superior service and better um, fees, better rates, um, and we only have that Ford commitment program with him. So. Um, you know, we're going to we're going to definitely recommend that you talk to our preferred lenders. And um, I want to kind of finish up here with um, providing with a link to our online university for real estate investing. So wherever you're getting your information from online, you're Googling, you're on YouTube, you're on bigger pockets, you're on wherever you're now going to be introduced to an entire university online for free without any cost whatsoever on Marshall Reddick's website. We have hundreds of videos articles, eBooks, calculators, guides, everything you can think of on our learn page, marshreddick.com forward slash learn. You can filter from over 50 different topics, insurance, 1031 exchange, self-directed retirement accounts, um, uh, private money lending, property management. There are so many topics on our learn page that you can filter and watch videos, read articles, tremendous amount of information. We've been building this out for about 15 years. So um, I, 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 I'm I, excited if you have not already watched recordings and videos and used our calculators. All of it is on our learn page, marshreddick.com forward slash learn. We've got about maybe five or six slides left, so we're coming towards the end here. And I just want to kind of summarize a few things. Marshall Reddick is a one-stop shop a team of advisors, lenders, realtors, inspectors, insurance agents, property managers, accountants, CPAs. We have a lot of uh, incredible referrals that we've been working with for decades um, that we spread across these different locations throughout the country. I want to also kind of reiterate some key investing principles that I went over and, and some that I'm going to just kind of jump into right now. But um, to build a real estate portfolio, it must be scalable. Um, how do you scale a real estate portfolio without just, you know, 
doing all of the legwork on your own and not being able to build, you know, beyond maybe just one or two properties. How do you leverage experts and professionals and how do you get leverage technology and what kind of properties are going to allow you to get a second, third, fourth, fifth? What types of properties are going to completely halt that and make you never buy any more properties because you're, you're, you're completely over leveraged and you don't have the time, the resources, the ability to continue scaling? So we teach investors how to build a scalable portfolio. A lot of that comes with the types of properties, the property management, the technology that we uh, utilize. I mentioned already to work with a company that does the real estate and property management so that they have that accountability in what types of properties they recommend. Um, our job starts when we close escrow where you know other companies that are only selling you a property, their job ends. Uh, we have a, a belief, a philosophy that the only time you should have to spend your own money on real estate investing is when you acquire the property, the down payment, the closing costs. You should never have to go back into your bank account and that's going to be based on the uh, price, the rents, the cash flow, the down payments, um, and how we set that up for you. Um, you know, we've been working with investors since the 80s and 90s. Many of them retired, many of them second generation investors. What we found is having a combination of maybe five to 10 doors that you've accumulated over maybe a five to 10 year period, diversified in a few different locations across the country will allow you to have a perfect balance of cash flow, appreciation, um, different markets. So you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. Um, you also don't, you know, maybe didn't accumulate all your properties at one time. So you've spread them out a little bit. Um, that's what it really comes down to is building a balanced portfolio, diversification, and we're going to do it one property at a time. We believe asset protection is a combination of professional property management and the right landlord insurance coverage. So we also get into insurance and we'll explain and we'll recommend what types of liability coverage you should have, what types of writers, and, and we'll connect you with our insurance agent that will explain what types of policies we recommend for landlord insurance coverage, how much liability coverage, and we get into a lot of that detail so that you're not having to worry about this or wonder how this works on your own. And finally, the types of properties and the types of neighborhoods that we stick to are the types of neighborhoods that any one of our staff members would feel comfortable walking your dog at night. I know that that's subjective. I know everybody might have a different opinion there. We use it as a guiding system. Um, ultimately, um, there are people that are buying properties in different parts of the country that don't know what kind of neighborhood they're buying in. And they see a property in Cincinnati, Ohio, or in Cleveland, Ohio, or Kansas City, Missouri, or um, St. Louis, Missouri, or Memphis, Tennessee. And um, these are all very dangerous real estate markets um, that have very, very, very poor job markets. Um, and that basically it's kind of a landmine buying properties there, um, being surrounded by um, areas that don't go up in value, that do have a lot of D-class properties. And we know that um, it's very common for investors to see that property, to not know what they're buying, and then maybe to go out there later and go, this is not a safe area. This is not an area that I would you know, want to own a property. And unfortunately, I didn't know that when I was buying it. So um, you know, if you're wondering what type of neighborhood you're buying in, um, fly out there, right? Go there on the weekend, go there in the evening, like see what that area and location looks like. There's a very old saying in real estate where your property is going to look like your tenant and your tenant is going to look like your property. And ultimately that comes down with, you know, comes along with things like credit, income, job stability, um, crime rates, right? So, um, you know, we want to make sure that um, we're not selling properties that any of our staff members wouldn't buy or feel comfortable, you know, being in that area and location. So finally, um, we're going to go through the risks of investing in real estate. And we'll be able to articulate how to minimize these risks as much as possible. Um, I mentioned earlier that that um, that matrix, that wheel of uh, why, when, what, where, who was one of the most important slides. I would also say this is one of the most important slides because this defines exactly how to decrease vacancy, maintenance, what to do to um, cover ourselves, property values going up and down, and how to protect ourselves against natural disasters. Uh, ultimately, we already said that lower um, property classes have higher maintenance and vacancy, higher property classes have lower maintenance and vacancy. 
if you're buying a property two hours away or even more from a major metropolitan market, then um, you're going to see a much smaller, much, much, much smaller rental market. So buying within a major metropolitan market opens up that um, rental population. Uh, also, the type of property um, and being in that three to four bedroom, you know, 1,200 to 2,200 square feet. Obviously, if we sell a five bedroom home that's 4,000 square feet, there's a much smaller rental market for that and it wouldn't make sense. So how do we minimize maintenance? Well, um, new construction properties or turnkey properties that have been completely renovated um, will come along with less maintenance in the initial years. Doing a home inspection and having us look at the age and condition of the roof, the furnace, the AC system, the plumbing, all the major components. So for helping you buy a resale property, uh, we're going to make sure you do a home inspection. We're gonna review that home inspection with you. And we're gonna recommend whether we make, it makes sense for us to continue moving forward in that transaction um, and pass that contingency. Uh, Marshall Reddick acts as your realtor, your buyer's agent. So these are not properties that we own. We don't have a conflict of interest in the property. 90% uh, of the time, it's not even our listing. So, you know, we're, we're working with you. And if that property doesn't um, bring what, we're, what we thought we would, then we move it aside and we go on to the next one. <clears throat> and that's why you should be working with a fiduciary and a buyer's agent and a realtor who represents you and not working directly with the seller um, and basically working with the fox guarding the hen house, which I think is the most horrendous idea you can possibly do, is go directly to an owner um, and buy it direct or you know try to cut out you know agents and 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 work direct i i, I think you're most likely going to um you know cut your nose to spite your face as the expression is um and work with a fiduciary who's uh representing you so um this is how we decrease maintenance by putting 20 to 30 percent down and having positive cash flow being in these strong metropolitan markets that have good job growth that have um, you know, low vacancy will allow us to, you know, weather the ups and downs of property values as long as we can keep them rented and get positive cash flow. We've already looked at several of our markets that haven't crashed ever before. So we are in some of the strongest, safest markets in the country. Finally, when it comes to natural disasters, I mentioned already, we're going to go through insurance. We're going to avoid properties in flood zones. We're going to avoid properties that are in very high risk locations. And we're going to make sure that you have enough um, liability coverage to protect you. And when you work with Marshall Reddick, this is exactly what we want you to look like after buying your first property, your second property, your 10th property. Um, that's me a long time ago after closing on my second investment property. Um, I still own this property uh, many years later. I'm still just as happy about it. Um, my dad, I went through all the steps that we, we, we taught you guys here tonight. This was actually the fourth property that I had to make an offer on to get it accepted. Um, I did not have any emotional attachment. I knew exactly what I was looking for. I was guided by advisors at Marshall Reddick um, and ultimately followed the exact process. You have people at Marshall Reddick, many of which own rental properties, many of which are working within all of the services, using our property management, using our private lending, um, dozens of employees that we manage rental properties for. Uh, at Marshall Reddick. So um, we believe in this. We've been doing this for many years. Um, we walk the walk um, more than anything. So um, actually, we went on that slide already. But um, here is a slide with Denise's um, contact information. And um, uh, you guys, I, I really appreciate you so much for staying with us uh, till the end of the presentation. And I um, noticed there that that got cut off but you can contact Denisa directly uh, at denisa.peralta at Marshall Reddick. There is Denisa's direct number. Um, if you wanna fill out a consultation uh, form, you can also do that. Um, if you're looking for a more personal approach, you can um, contact Denisa directly. And um, you know she'll just be able to get on an informal call or video call with you, be able to answer as many questions as you have, and ultimately um, you know, build that relationship so we can point you guys in the right direction. Yeah, and um, Denisa, if you want to say the last words, I just want to thank everybody for coming. Thank you all for being here this evening. Um, thank you. Everybody, I love yeah. following up with you guys as well.
we go. All right. Thank you, everybody. We look forward to speaking to you soon. Bye.